In this video, we're going to explore the input range here. And as you can see here, if I move this, you can see what is happening with our data or our chart. It's starting to change. And if I expand it again, it takes some time, but it will load this animation and then it shows again our values. And this is quite nice because now you can start to select a range of values within the activity that maybe your customer would like to see or your users. So let's start and explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on the chart.js range input. So basically, we'll be using a range where we will show the data based on, depending on the range value. All right. So to do this, first of all, just make sure you go to chart.js3.com getting started. And this is uh, the code that we're going to use. And basically, this, this code can be just copied and paste. So we're going to copy this code. And if you would like to understand JavaScript, please watch this video here. So I'm going to put it in here and then I'll just cut out this part, put it here the title so I know what's the title of the video. All right, so refresh here, there we are. So we have this here and what we would like to do now is add up some extra data here, which would make it far more interesting. So what we're going to do in here is just copy this part here or at least duplicate this a few more times. So I say here, copy or comma, paste this and comma, paste this, all right. Here we have this. I'll do exactly the same here. So in total, we have now 21 value or values or data points because there's a total of seven times three. So three weeks of data. All right. So what we could do here is just to give it a little bit of difference here with this. I'll just change this a little bit. So you will see some adjustments. It's 22, 22, 26. All right, so there we are. So we have this, the colors here can be ignored because they will loop through consistently. If one, if this color would end and there's another value here after that, it would just start again back at the very beginning. This is a nice feature of Chart.js, by the way, Chart.js 3 to be specific. All right, so we have everything here. Now what I want to do here is I would like to put in, in here an input here, and this input will be basically a range so it's a type equals range and you can say your id points or data points doesn't matter we won't be using the id at all but it's just for for extras and then here minimum value so we would like to show at least five data points by default and their max value for these five data points if you want me to, to zoom in more the max five and or sorry minimum five and the max would be 21 basically the length of this here so to trigger this we need to make sure that we have a function here and we say this will be on on input at the moment there's any kind of input adjustment we will say the following we'll give it a function here trigger this function we say uh, update chart and then we say this value which is which would mean the selected value in this specific input range all right so we have this now let's save that and refresh here all right there we are we have now a nice bar chart here with some extra data now what i would like to do here is to make sure that this starts to work so that it can start to show or hide whatever we want to to do so in here all we do is the following we're going to grab this function name which is the update chart so we say here function update chart and here is the parameter and the parameter will eventually be related to this value here but we will just call this here the uh, range and in here we're going to do this or the following we're going to create here the following we just say here the console and what we would like to grab is here the range dot value and the moment we move it, we should see something happening. So if I refresh here, open up the developer tab, and you go to console, and then let's range. You can see now what's going on here. It just does something here by default. It grabs all these numbers here beautifully. What I want to do here is just to put in here the value by default. Oh, sorry. Here, we can just say value equals, and then we say 21 points refresh this so we see all the values here and the range selector starts at 
the very end. All right, so we have that. The next thing we would like to do here is to, or probably we could just move here the labels. So in chart.js, we're going to play around with the labels. And the reason why we're going to play around with the labels is because the, in chart.js, if there are lesser labels, you will see this. So for example, if I only, I'm just going to uh, remove a few. Let's say there's only two labels here. I'll just cut out everything. Save that. And you see what happens is it will only draw two data points now by default. So that would mean that the labels here is your key influencer or the, the part that is the core of the, the uh, dominator of this part here. So this is subservient to the labels. All right. So that would mean that we all, all we have to do is to adjust it just to say here the labels need to be in the range value and then we're going to adjust them. So what we need to do here, even before we continue on, is a const labels equals, and this is just easier for us later on, this. Then we say this equals labels. Very straightforward. We just move something, nothing changes here except that the, the layout here or the setup at the back end is adjusted or at the JavaScript is adjusted because we can copy this specific pointer. So what we want to do now is the following. Well, basically, we'll say here, uh, we want to, we can basically grab the range here. So what we're going to do, all right, sorry, I was almost confused, but what we're going to do is the following. We're going to say here, we, let's make the other console log, where we get the range value. We have this range value here. So we say here, console.log. And in here, we just grab the array that we want. So we say my chart config.data.labels. All right, so to be sure, to be clear why, my chart refers to the constant of my chart, which is the chart, is the canvas. Then we have the config, and the config is this part here. So in the canvas of my chart, we go to config, and from config, we're going here to, sorry, the data. This is the data value, and in the data, we are going to select the labels, which is coincidentally the same name of our const. All right. So the reason why we want to do this is because we want to do here later on the equal to. So if I save this now, refresh, and if I do something here, you can see we get the array with every label value in here. All right. And that is specifically this one here. Uh, this one here, not this here. All right. So now what we're going to do here is basically slice the array. We want to slice the array, but we do not want to adjust the array of its original shape. Because the moment you adjust the original shape by, by cutting away the original, the chart cannot draw anymore the old data. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get here a constant, and this constant will be called, or you can call it anything, we say range value, it will be all right. And basically, this is this label here. Label here. Let me say here dot slice. And basically, we will slice. We say zero. We want to start at zero. We, we will uh, make a copy of the original labels constant, which is the array here. This we make a copy of it. Give it a name here, and we will cut this specific copy array. And this copy array is called range value, but we're going to slice it. And what we're going to slice, first of all, we want to start at zero, meaning that we're going to copy from the first data point index here, we copy it, and then we will say we copy it until the very end value here or whatever value we selected. So if we have here 21, we would grab everything here. We get the length until 21. But if we will go down here, to, if I scroll down, you will see here probably now. Oh, it doesn't show, of course, but let's say we want to get only the first five. So there's a minimum was five, which is here, there's five points. And it will slice only, and we'll get the first one, the first the zero, index zero, up to the fifth value, which is index four, to be specific. All right? So let's get this, because this might be slightly confusing, but if I say here, console.log, and let's log out the range value. And then I will say here, hide these two here. 
So it's very clear, we only pinpoint this one here in the console. Now you can see here, if I go down here, our array is starting to get smaller. And apparently I was moving this, but if I go here down, minimum was five, we get five values. The length is five, which would start at zero, all up to number four, Monday up to Friday. All right, so this is beautiful because this is exactly what we want. So now what we want to do is we want to say this equals the labels here. So you overwrite this by the update. So we're going to do this one here, and this is the following we're going to do. We'll say here, this is our original item here. We grab this. We say this will be now equals to not anymore to labels, but to our new array that we created, which is the range value. So in here, once we did this, let me say here, my chart dot update. And once we update this, we can save this. Let's remove this one here, we refresh. And now, as you can see, we are starting to cut away. Am I correct? If I go back here, yeah, all right. It just takes some time in loading, but you can see here, now we have a selected range. There we are. And now we can extend the selected range as well. There we are. And this is the way you can play around because this is, of course, one of the things that you might want to use for your chart in Chart.js. All right. So if you like these kind of things, I would highly recommend you to check out one of my other items. It creates another level of interactivity, which is to create a clickable bar chart with links in Chart.js. This is another level of advancement, and it's another layer, which is quite fun, because once you click on one of these bars, you will be able to put a link. And that would be very nicely connected with this if you would have every of these specific items being broken down in something else and people want to click on this to go somewhere else, you have that specific video here covering it as well. So you, you put another la layer of interactivity and complexity on your chart.